It's the Daniel Bryan Power Hour on It's the Sunset Flip Wrestling Podcast, coming to you live on Double C TV, featuring Darren. Oh God, where are you? And Double C Wrestling gets you laid. Gotcha. As they take on five hours of WWE programming. I'm pretty sure he fudged it just while he was doing the hurricane run. Like, oh God, I don't know how to do this correctly. Yeah. On our way to SummerSlam. Because that's what we're doing. And I'm doing it alone this week because uh, Darren's on assignment. So, yeah. I'm not sure what the assignment is, but it's he's on assignment. Because we're being professional and all that stuff. But, hey. Show must go on, even if it's a day late, for the second week in a row. But hey, we're still I, we're still pushing this out. So we got another SmackDown, got another Raw today to take care of SmackDown from the 19th and Smack and uh, Monday Night Raw from the 22nd of July. So let's start off with SmackDown because that's where it is. SmackDown's where is that? So okay, so the show starts out with Teddy Long. He goes. Vince is going to show up and he's going to give him a job evaluation. Because there's going to be a lot of those. And Booker T, he interrupts and goes, Yeah, I'm back. Booker T's back from having surgery. And he thinks uh, Teddy Long that he's, you know, pick up all the slack and stuff. And then Vince comes out. And to, uh persuade Vince McMahon both Teddy and Booker make matches for later on tonight Maddox then interrupts he wants to control both shows because that's what he wants to do Uh, Vince is going to name a new GM and the new GM is Vicky Guerrero to the chagrin and other distaste to everyone so we got that to look forward to. R- wonderful. Just plain wonderful. So, we go backstage. No, we don't go backstage. We have a fa- first match tonight. Excuse me. We have Dolph Ziggler versus Jack Swagger. And a match where Zeb Coulter and Antonio Cesaro get ejected halfway through the match. Ziggler wins. Moving on. Oh, wait, we can't move on because he gets on the microphone. He says, he's sorry that he didn't dump AJ sooner. And everybody, you know, laughs at that. So this is him being funny. AJ goes crazy backstage and starts throwing chairs and tries to beat up Biggie Langston and they embrace. Foreshadowing? Next up, it's The Shield versus The Usos in a regular tag team match. However, everyone brawls and Ambrose assists. And that's when Mark Henry shows up because he got beat up by The Shield and therefore he has to be a good guy after being a bad guy. So that's what Mark Henry's doing now. He's going to be fed to The Shield. Next up, we have a match that was canned from last week's Raw. We have Wade Barrett versus Daniel Bryan. And a match where Wade Barrett tops. He taps. After that, we go backstage with Vicky Guerrero and Maddox. And Vicky slaps uh, Brad Maddox in the face very, very hard. It was pretty good to see, but I still don't like Vicky. Whatever. Uh, Miss TV segment. Yay. A segment that we don't really want. Ugh. But it's with Paul Heyman. And he says to Punk, Punk, you gotta stay down because you're dumb. Or something like that. Anyways. Fourth match of the night. Sort of. We have Curtis Axel versus Chris Jericho. Uh, it was already reported last week that Jericho's going to be on uh, 
Fozzie tour, so we pretty much know what's going to happen. Uh, this is for the IC title. Uh, let's see. Heyman distracts for a split second. Axel retains. Ryback shows up out of nowhere and beats up Chris Jericho. So he's going out with an injury, even though we already know that he's concerts stuff. Right. Oh. Next up. Uh, we have Damian Sandow. He camp comes out. He says that he did not screw Cody Rhodes for the Money in the Bank briefcase. That they are still good friends. And then Cody comes out. And then and then Sandow's like, here, I can allow you to uh, protect my briefcase for when I actually cash it in. Cody takes the briefcase and pretty much smacks him in the face with it. Because Cody's now a good guy. So, okay, so then they fight then and they eventually leave. Uh, match number five. D uh, Darren Young versus Rob Van Dam in uh, pretty much a squash match. But, hey, it's an RVD squash match, so it's going to be pretty good. Uh, Five-star Frog Splash uh, picks up the victory. He's starting to get more tuned to the WWE style now. And it won't be as awkward. However, later on on Raw, we see an awkward RVD match. Next up, the uh, main event is Randy Orton versus Alberto Del Rio. Again. Like, we haven't seen this many, 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 Times before. Sorry. I'm drinking water. Okay. So, it's... Like I said, we've seen this so many times in the past. It doesn't really matter. At this point, RKO Orton wins. Why not? Now we go to Raw. But first, before we go to Raw, we have an... Indie spot where we take a look at uh, different indie feds out there and see what we like, see what we don't like. Uh, there has been some uh, concerns, I have to say, in TNA that with their mass firings, their releases, and all that stuff, they're trying to. <laughs> they fired a whole bunch of guys, including a guy who was supposed to have a uh, almost a lifetime contract because he, he broke his neck. He got released. So, <laughs> people are not happy. He's not happy. The internet is not happy. Uh, people are now stating that TNA will probably die by the end of the year. If it keeps on going this at this rate. Which it very may well. Uh, other other stuff. I uh, Other indie stuff. Uh, Portland Wrestling Uncut is still doing reruns. I'm pissed off. Because I want more action. And this is the sixth episode. So it's like, come on. Get it together, guys. You're halfway through your contract. You're going to run out of shows because I, at this point you may not get a uh, you know, an extension. Other stuff. I recently took a, I recently looked up a hood slam. That's a youtube.com slash hood slam. It's a very good indie promotion out of uh, Southern California. I think it is Sacramento ish. And I like it. It's it's a highly gimmicked uh, fed that does not take itself seriously at all. It's basically a big party for every match. Uh, to put it, to tell you exactly how it, what it is, let's just call it uh, cosplay wrestling. So... You have a bunch of video game characters 
and they fight a lot of times. And there's other crazy gimmicks. Um, one one of the matches I saw was uh, Johnny Cage from Mortal Kombat taking on Scorpion, also from Mortal Kombat, in a Game Genie match. A uh, Game Genie match is where they take a Game Genie and they put it into a console and they activate codes so they have like more health, hit higher, you know, more salmon and all that good stuff. You know, like a video game. And it was extremely entertaining. You should check out Hood Slam. Alright. Now we're going to Monday Night Raw. Uh, no intro uh, for this one. And the show starts off with Brad Maddox. There's going to be a contract signing. With Daniel Bryan and John Cena. Maddox is questioning himself like uh, there's like someone in his ear. Cough, cough, Vince. And basically he's doubting the abilities of Daniel Bryan. Nobody is doubting Daniel Bryan at this point. Except for Vince. Okay, Fabe. Anyways, uh, he says that he wants Daniel Bryan to prove himself, so he's going to be put in multiple matches later tonight. And we'll get to that later. So they, they, they signed the contract, nothing major happens. There's no fighting. Uh, match number one, Sheamus versus Alberto Del Rio, where Sheamus has a huge bruise on his leg. Uh, Sheamus goes for a white noise, collapses, and then gets pinned by Alberto Del Rio. If I was Alberto Del Rio, I would be focusing on leg submissions, then trying to put on the cross arm breaker. Because that would actually make sense. Uh. Now we have a backstage interview with Booker T and Teddy Long. They are extremely bitter that they are not in charge of SmackDown anymore. And they're pretty much fighting amongst themselves because, you know, uh, Teddy Long is frustrated that he was holding the ball and uh, Booker was injured. Booker is frustrated because he just got back from an injury and surgery. So, I don't know. Uh, Next up, we have a match. Christian versus Titus O'Neil. Titus O'Neil jobs out. Yay. But he did seem impressive. I'll give him that. Because Titus... Titus... Titus can get the job done. He could do it. He just hasn't done it yet. It's... I don't know. Watch this guy. Uh, we go up another backstage interview with uh, Ryback, the Ryback. He says that he hates average people, and he wants to bully average people. Remember, Ryback, don't be a bully, be a star. Uh, Mark Henry then comes out. He says he wants to take on the Shield. And so the Shield come out, and then they start attacking... Mark Henry, then the Usos make the save. And the Shield pretty much run away because, holy crap, they actually have a tag team helping them that are actually good at, I don't know, tag team matchups. Working as a team. Uh, We go backstage with Daniel Bryan and John Cena. Daniel Bryan says, Don't interfere in my matches! Because if they, if, because if you do, uh, nobody's gonna give me credit. That sort of thing. Next matchup, match number three: uh, Dolph Ziggler versus Darren Young. Another job. Darren Young jobs out with a zigzag, and then Biggie attacks, and then Ziggler gets out of the way, or something. I don't remember. I was kind of in and out at this point. And then we go to Ms. TV again. This is the Total Divas segment. 
Uh, apparently there was a nip slip here. Apparently it was not in my feed. Otherwise I wouldn't have noticed it. Uh, they show a clip from the reality show and it's dumb. G uh, Jerry Lawler gets invited to the, to the ring because he likes divas and then he gets he gets slapped by Eva in a very, very soft slap. It's more like a push to the face rather than a slap. It's just, ah, oh, so bad. I don't see this lasting very long on the E-Network, to be honest. I mean, the only way you can actually get the full run of this series is if the WWE actually brought out its network and put it on like they were supposed to do. Cause this is gonna be bad. But then again, it's on the E network, so it's probably gonna be bad anyway. With all those great shows like whatever that Kardashian crap that everyone likes or doesn't like, I don't like it. I don't watch it. Dumb. We go backstage with Brad Maddox and Triple H. Triple H says that Daniel Bryan is the future. That you should be pushing him instead of trying to kill him in the ring. Steph Stephanie is there and she does nothing. Again. Uh, match number four. Fine Don Go versus Cody Rhodes. Uh, Fandango is out of position for a moonsault, but gets in the way anyway for Cody Rhodes. Sandow tries to interfere, but it doesn't work. Cody Rhodes wins. Next up, we have CM Punk. He comes out. He says he's hurt, but he's still standing, and he's not afraid of Brock Lesnar. No, l let me do this right, since Darren's not here. Brock! Lesnar. Duh. He wants a SummerSlam match. Beast versus the best. Heyman, Paul Heyman, via satellite, uh, accepts the match. There's some jabs at via satellite and all that stuff. Pretty good. Uh, match number five: Wade Barrett versus Rob Van Dam. This is the awkward match I was telling you about. You know, sometimes when wrestlers have, you know, clashing styles, sometimes it can work. Other times it doesn't. This is this is kind of what the later is all about. You see, the styles don't really match. And besides that, this is probably the first time they've ever wrestled together. So... <laughs> You're not going to be, you know, promising very much anyway. So, huh. However. Uh, Rob Van Dam wins. And right, next up. Big one. It's your main event. This is going to be... The Daniel Bryan gauntlet match. I was hoping they'll actually say it would be a gauntlet match because I like gauntlet matches. Okay, so his first opponent is Jack Swagger. They have an okay match. Uh, Jack Swagger taps fairly quickly. Uh, most of this whole gauntlet match is for the second part. Second part is with, excuse me, it's with Antonio Cesaro, and by God, I loved this match. It was so, oh, I need to go and watch it again on the DVR, because Daniel Bryan is awesome, Antonio Cesaro is awesome, they're both extremely technically sound. And they work well together. This is what I want to see. 
the uppercuts in this matchup from Antonio Cesaro were brutal. It's like you can feel them. And oh, he did like 12, 15. I didn't count. But it was up there to 15 to 20 actually in succession. And Daniel Bryan was got just totally got beat up by it. However, Daniel Bryan in his excellence of, well, execution. Right. <laughs> uh, Antonio Cesaro was going to do one more major uh, uppercut. European uppercut. However, in the air, Daniel Bryan catches the arm and rolls up Cesaro for the pin. And the crowd goes nuts. Uh, backstage, there's a camera there. It says, oh, well, looks like Daniel Bryan. I think that was Alex Riley with him. It's like, wow, he's still employed. <laughs> and Maddox is like, okay, well, let's see how he deals with this. And out comes Ryback and everyone freaks out. Because right back is like the monster and all that stuff. At this point, I go, uh, wasn't the Big Show supposed to return? Uh, apparently the Big Show is still having knee problems and he'll be back to do some non-wrestling segments, I think, next. Not next week. I'll explain why later. Alright, so the third opponent is Ryback. And it's, well, brutal totally slows Brian down all of the adrenaline is lost and decides to put Daniel Bryan through a table making the DQ so Daniel Bryan technically still wins the gauntlet match uh, John Cena rushes out to the ring and he takes on Ryback and then he challenges Ryback to a tables match again so we're going to have another tables match for next week Right back agrees. And Daniel Bryan will also be in action as he's going to face. Oh, who is he going to face? Oh, I forget. But, and that ends Raw. So, the whole thing with the big show. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, next week, next week. Okay. So, apparently, they decided to tape an extra uh, episode of Raw yesterday on Tuesday. So, so next week's Raw is not going to be live. So, I expect it to be highly edited. Uh, crowd edited and all that stuff. However, Daniel Bryan Chance will continue because he's basically the next big thing. Daniel Bryan is going to be the face of the WWE. And it's amazing when John Cena came out because that was the first time in an extremely long time, I'm talking years, when the entire crowd actually appreciated John Cena being out there in the ring. So otherwise it's like, ah, boo, Cena, get out of here. This time it was like, cheers. And WWE actually needs someone that the entire crowd can cheer. See, that's that has been the problem of John Cena since pretty much day one of his championship reign in 2005 or six or whatever it was. That we've seen enough. Pass the torch. You should pass the torch, John Cena. It's you're done. You can be a mentor and or whatever. I don't know, but it's time for a new blood. It's time for a new generation. And it's time for Daniel Bryan to become WWE champion and then get cashed on by Randy Orton. Ugh. For what if what if Randy Orton tries to cash in and then Daniel Bryan beats him anyway? Yeah, that's that's what I want to see. So, okay. So next week, another SmackDown. 
another Raw. And as we go forward to uh, SummerSlam, and hopefully I can get these shows done on time. Uh, programming note. Uh, later tonight, actually. It is Wednesday, after all. I'll try to continue the Nose Lock Challenge on Pokemon. Pokemon Blue. So, if you want to see that, and want to be there live for it, all you gotta do, hit that little uh, follow button on the Twitch thing. And you'll get an email when I do these things, all these broadcasts, all these upcoming uh, tabletop games. Which, by the way, we have a new campaign. Wanted to announce a new campaign. Uh, tomorrow, starting tomorrow, at around uh, one thirty my time, maybe 2. And it is going to be a Dungeons & Dragons 4E game. And we'll see how that goes. A lot of people don't like 4E. And, well, we'll just. It's something. We gotta get more content anyway. So! So! Uh, I'm just stalling for time right now. Because we still have about. Oh, whatever. I'm just gonna end it. So, anyways! Uh, another SmackDown, another Raw coming up next week on the road to SummerSlam. And we will see you next week once again on the Sunset Flip Wrestling Podcast. Da da da.